All right, day five, checking traps. And it's kind of been slow. Um, still been hitting the, 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 still been hitting the nest predators pretty decent. Um, caught an otter yesterday in one of our water sets, but uh, the coyote activity's been pretty slow. We haven't seen a lot of, a lot of signs since the rain the other day of them moving through, but it's gonna turn around eventually keep those traps hunting but pulling up here to our first uh, deer feeder this morning and got a pretty good pretty good raccoon over there it looks like a double front foot catch in our in our dog proof trap and it's uh like I said super simple to set these around these deer feeders they're already coming taking advantage of the free food um, you give them something that they like in those dog proofs and and they'll go for it um, and then just change it up after a couple of days of catching they'll they'll get trap shy just change up your bait um, maybe change up the location of the trap move it a little bit and you get right back after them so we're gonna get this guy taken care of and keep on moving day five <clears throat> All right, we got this guy taken care of. Got our trap rebaited. <clears throat> Changed it up today. Went with a little homemade bait with some salmon oil for a trailing scent. And nice, nice big boar coon right here. So we're going to load him up and keep moving. We got some beaver traps that we set today down by the lake to check. So it should be a good day. So, I've been having a fair amount of raccoons show up on this feeder and caught some right off the bat and then they got kind of trap shy. Changed up the bait last night and out of the four traps, we caught with two. You can see we got a nice double right there. So, get them taken care of and keep on moving. Alright, pulling up to this dam crossover. And I can see I got another raccoon right here. I'll show you this real quick. So, raccoons love to travel creeks. We talked about setting on creeks in the dog proof video. Um, here we've got a, a crossover that comes from the actual Indian Mound food plot back there. Uh, comes through the swamp, it's a road, and I, I catch a lot of them right here in past years um but i just moved the trap to this side of the road had one here yesterday got another one today crossovers uh they make they make great funnels um to you know to funnel all kinds of wildlife but especially you know raccoons that are headed just 75 yards that way to this feeder so and get this guy taken care of uh and keep on rocking so far it's been a good day All right, pulling up down here. We caught an otter on this set yesterday, and this is just a, a dam crossover. We got the big, big main lake dam right here, and the overflow pipe runs out down this creek. And this is a good spot for beavers and otter traffic. And we caught an otter here yesterday, and it looks like we got a pretty good beaver in the trap down here today. We'll go down here and get him taken care of. Just running these uh, body grip traps on these crossovers. 
and uh, using this RTS spreader from uh, Southern Snares. It's just like a daggum caulk gun and it's super easy. I've seen guys set these things by hand, but I don't have the hand strength to pull that off. Press the springs down and throw the safety catches. Once, once you do that, once you can press the springs, it just opens up and you can pull that joker out of there like that. And that is a pretty hefty beaver right there. Um, male beaver too. So, and he's really, I don't think he's that old because you look at that tail and there's not a lot of scarring on that tail where he's been fighting for breeding rights. Um, and I mean, it's, yeah, it's just about as wide as my hand there, but nonetheless, a good one to catch. So super simple with these body grippers, make sure our safeties, safety latches are thrown on these arms and just, uh, close it back up, set the, uh, dog into the trigger and I'm just gonna look and make sure that my wire that is my trigger is inside the frame of the trap when it's set and that it's covering the majority of the opening there and I look down the side and it's not sticking out to one side or the other I want it inside that trap so when that trap fires from being hit the animals in there and not hitting it with his nose on the outside. That way we get a good catch. I'll just tilt these arms up. Keeping my safeties in place. And I've got an H stand down here. An H bracket that this trap sets in. And it keeps it in position. Just right there where these beavers, right there where these beavers and otters slide up and down this dam. Run my stick back down in there. Put my stick back down in there to stabilize it and she's good to go, ready to catch again. So we're gonna keep on rocking. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But run the traps this morning, not a bad morning. Um, and got one more set up here by the front. So in the truck headed out. And I know I got a coyote in it because I got a trail camera photo of him uh, early this morning. So we're going to head over here and get him taken care of. A good sight right there pulling up on a set and got a coyote bouncing in it so, looks like he's caught pretty deep on the foot so let's go take a look
turn this camera off so we don't kill the batteries in it while we remake this set. That's a, what you want to see right there. Nice, uh, looks like a male coyote. Um, what I did, you can see these tracks right here in this road. And I set the traps right in the tracks that the coyotes were showing me where they want to walk. Um, I put one on this side of the road and then I went down just five or six foot and put another one on this side of the road. Um, and I'll show you that one's still set. Um, fortunately, this guy didn't have a partner with him last night, so we weren't able to double up at this location. But we'll show you what it looked like before we caught. Uh, but we're going to get this coyote taken care of first. As you can see, you can you can see looking at that foot that's a good deep catch that coyote's foot is still touching that pan of that trap so just like we talked about with our pan tension um, want to make sure it's set right so this is what you end up with with a, just a pretty southeastern coyote right there we're gonna get him out of there we're getting ready to reset this set but here's the other one that we put in um, and you can see it's it's almost completely blended in right here right in this track that these coyotes are traveling they're traveling up and down either side of this and just put a uh, put a put a trap in right there with two punch holes and a little bit of a uh, gland lure and some some other lure down that punch hole and a little bit of urine over there where we caught I actually had a fresh coyote turd that I put nine inches uh, in front of the trap on this side and on the trail camera pictures you can see the coyote was coming from this way put his nose down um, smelled that turd and then stepped over it I'm assuming an attempt to mark it as his own and that's where those nine inches come into play and step right there on that pan and we ended up with a good front foot catch so we'll get this one reset and uh, you know, like I said, not a bad day. Alright, here's our trap. You can see that coyote was in that trap. There's no blood on it. Doesn't damage their foot. Just holds them in there. Um, and, and these offset jaws on these traps actually allow for a couple of different things. They allow for the trap to actually close more. You get more holding power with offset jaw, um, but then you also have, um, it increases the ability of the circulation to the foot that's below the, the jaws there. Um, and when I say you get increased holding power, if those jaws were not offset, meaning that they closed um, and touched when they were when they were together, or when the levers were up, the jaws were closed. Well, if you put something in there, those levers wouldn't be able to ride up as far before you know it would be closed on a coyote's foot. So having that offset in there, those levers actually are allowed to ride up just a little bit more on that trap and hold it in place better. So um, just straighten this lever up right here they get bent up sometimes when you catch them uh, just you can take a pair of pliers and grab them and straighten them back out or you can do what I just did and I'll check these spring pins too a lot of times a chain might get caught right there and it'll it'll bend that in a crooked way but this trap still still in good shape uh, still still have the spring pins bent down that are gonna offer it some feet you know, to, to bed good in the ground. We're just gonna put a screen wire pan cover on it and reset it and see see what we catch. See what else we can catch right here. I, I mean, I can smell this coyote.
All right. So we are going to bed this thing right here, right back where it was. And now, we really don't have to be so careful about trying to blend it in because this coyote has just, I mean, tore this area up. And like I said, it's full of scent. So it's gonna, it's gonna have a little bit of eye appeal to it and some good, uh, good nose appeal for sure. Just get our trap bed dug back out. Just fit that thing in there. It's pretty good there. Traps armed. Yep, I like that. I'll just sift some dirt back over it. Help if we take our shears <laughs> out. Sift some dirt back over top of it. It's uh, got a lot of vegetation in it. I'm gonna grab some of this stuff back here. Oh yeah, I can smell that coyote urine in there. So we're just gonna blend this back in best we can. We've got our trap back in the ground. Um, I'm going to take this screen wire pan cover right here that uh, you can see he's mangled that up, chewed it up pretty good. I'm just going to take some of this duff right here and I'm going to set it up under it right there. Nine inches off center of my pan. It's got a lot of good scent on it from that coyote. And then got a couple of turds right here that I saw. There's one there. I'm gonna set that nine inches from the pan. And then uh, right here is one. Got plenty of good scent on it right there. So and just that's it right there. That's our that's our remake. Um, you know, if this wasn't a flat set, if this was a dirt hole, um, and you know, you had some backing here, obviously that coyote will, will typically destroy your dirt hole, take away your backing. So what I'll do in those situations, I'll pull the trap with my trap puller and come just outside the catch circle and remake it again. And what you end up with when you're finished is, a but it looks like a bunch of crop circles going down the road from all the catches um like i said this area is just loaded with coyotes and i i can smell it standing here um and it'll be a good good uh offer some good attraction for anything else passing through here it's uh, a rock right there dirt clod so that's it, man. That's a pretty pretty decent day on the trap line. Um, and, you know, to end up with a coyote, what I can, what I can say is be patient. Let your traps hunt. Uh, when you're trapping small acreage, um, you know, coyotes have a huge area that they occupy and they call home. And 
they might not be coming through every day. It's human nature when you set a trap on some sign, you think, I'll catch something the next day, and you pull up and there's nothing there. You pull up the next day and there's nothing there. You know, maybe three or four days go by and you start thinking, man, I did something wrong, something's not right. Just leave that trap alone, let it hunt. Look at it out your truck window or out your uh, side by side as you pass by because the more you get out and mess with it, the more scent you're gonna lay down. So, um, hope you're, uh, like I said, hope you guys are enjoying the videos and uh, we're gonna keep, keep running these traps. So, thanks for watching.